Hey everybody, my name is Arie Rone. I work at the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development uh, with Lisa Cohen. Uh, what an honor. Um, thanks for being here. And uh, thank you all for being here as well. Um, this is the third installment of Creation Care. Uh, it's a discussion group to talk about religion and ecology and how we can inspire ourselves, inspire the, our communities, and ultimately inspire and change the world. So I'm really grateful for you all to be here. And today's topic is near and dear to my heart. Uh, it's the Sabbath and how the Sabbath um, can change the world. So, oh, amazing, Harry's here as well. Um, every, every soul that's here, it's so amazing. Harry, thank you so much for coming. Um, I, was saying, <laughs> I was just saying that uh, today we're talking about the Sabbath and ecology uh, and welcome Josh. Um, thank you so much for coming. And it's, it's amazing seeing things grow, like thank God. Um, so taking a day of rest, and that means different things in different cultures. Um, and I want to I wanna open the question up to you all. What, what does that mean for you? How, does, how can taking a day to rest, how can that be good for us? How can that be good for the environment? Or maybe you don't agree. Maybe there's no connection at all. And, and I pushback is also totally welcome. So let's go around. Um, and like I said, my name is Arie, and uh, I think I've already given my pitch. I think it's wonderful to have a day off, and uh, I follow a, um, a Jewish practice of not using um, electronics, um, like phones and computers on, on Shabbat or on the Sabbath, um, and uh, I find it's good for me to have a break um, and really uh, be with the people who I'm physically with instead of being scattered with the, all the people who I'm um, with virtually. Uh, so I will pass it off. Um, and I'll, I can just call on people's names to keep it ordered. So Anne, would you like to share next? Me? <laughs> um, I totally agree with what you just said. That normally would have been the practice for me on, on, on Sunday for me. But with the pandemic and everything, I'm still streaming mass. So I, I'm using my computer in the morning, but after that, I generally cut off everything. Um, so, but I think it's very important that we do have a day of rest because of everything that's going on in the world today. And it gives us a chance to, uh, uh, well, be closer to God. I personally feel that way through prayer. That's it for me. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, Lukoi, would you like to share next? Uh, oh, did you, who did you say? Lukoi? Lukoi, Lukoi John. <laughs> yes, yes, that name is hard. Sorry, sorry, but you have pronounced it well. Thank you. So generally, this is so great because um, I'm so glad, that's given that we are deep in the night here and that is around uh, six minutes past uh, 8 p.m. but I'm so glad. So generally rest is very good because as a Christian even if you see even from the godly context even God rested on the sixth on the seventh day. So it is a realistic that in human being as science let us go to science well too. We realize that the body also may be worn out you know when you over stress your body so much then as scientifically you are like the the aging on the that is stress on the muscles and the rest and the cells so generally that is um that is healthy part of the of the body to have rest since that uh, it will give you some regeneration and maybe sometimes the, the mind normally incorporate and then you rethink freshly you see but when you, you are entire moment uh, or it's so tasm um, you realize that at the end of the day you are thinking capacity might not be too optimal level so a rest is very necessary and it's very godly because even god rests on the on the, on the seventh day on the biblical context beautiful thank yes. you so much thank you that is my contest thank you thank you luca and josh go ahead and we're sharing about um uh, just i guess our name and um our relationship with uh, taking a, a Sabbath, a day of rest. And if we see that as helping us in a, personally and ecologically, um, or if not. Hi, uh, hi my name is uh, Josh Feldman. 
Um, and so, yeah, I observe the, the Jewish Sabbath. So I keep off electronics and um, like cars and everything. Um, and I think, um, I think it's relation to like ecology and helping the planet is, uh, I mean, I found that uh, keeping the Sabbath uh, helps you like refocus on what's really important. So um, like a lot of what the like book Eco Bible talks about is uh, how, um, how spiritually like chasing after like very materialistic things and not, and not, uh, you know, focusing too much on maybe self gratification and not on like protecting God's creation, um, how that's harmful to the planet. And I think taking a day of rest, uh, a day of introspection, uh, is good for us to refocus on what's important. And I also think, um, like not driving and not using technology, um, it also gives us a chance to like take a walk. Like a lot of people have the habit of taking a walk like in the park and uh, gives us a chance to reconnect with nature and, and appreciate God's creation. Amazing, thank you so much. Um, and then Manya is my wife, I'm just using her computer. Thanks Manya. And I'm gonna pass it to Ilana. And Ilana was sharing about, um, well, you heard when I started Josh. Um, <laughs> Uh, line of science. Sure about oh, you want to me? Okay, sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, <laughs> wasn't full. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so if I'm understanding, sorry, I'm late. Apologies, I couldn't find the Zoom link for some reason. But <laughs> um, I, I think a lot has been said, which is which is uh, really good. I think I, I don't know if this has been said, so apologies if it has. But the idea of stopping to smell the roses is a saying. Right? Or is it stop to smell the coffee? I'm not sure. But let's go with stop to smell the roses. Um, because I think that the, you know, we run from one place to another and whether it's with technology or without, or generally as Josh was saying, with technology, but to just stop and breathe, you know, which is, you know, everyone talks about meditation, et cetera, et cetera. But I think um, that's what the Sabbath can give us is, is that moment to stop um, because you can't do other things or you don't allow yourself or you just literally can stop and look at the world and the world, the wonder that is the world isn't so obvious necessarily. So one really has to stop and look um, and take that in and take some time to take it in, which I believe is what, what the Sabbath gives us. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, Harry, uh, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, I um, I hadn't really uh, really paid any attention to the Sabbath until I uh, got to go to Israel. But there, I I never really understood like a, uh, just how uh, meaningful it can be like uh, to someone personally, because uh, of there, uh, you know, it kind of forced me into not doing anything on the Sabbath and just taking a day to chill out, take inventory of myself, and uh, it was just a very good. Um, you know, day to just, you know, keep myself emotionally and uh, mentally and spiritually grounded. Awesome. Thank you, Harry. Um, Lisa. So, um, yeah, I'm Lisa. And I also love the day, uh, a day of rest um, in many, many facets. Um, I think it's a day of connection with things that sometimes we forget about, connecting with God, connecting with other people that maybe we don't connect, like you said, on uh, the local people, the local community, our families, people who are more local. And then obviously it's a day that we can spend in nature and we can reconnect to uh, nature and um, enjoy um, being in nature. Um, on the other hand, I think it's an incredible day, or if I could say even stopping full stop when we stopped for Corona um, and you saw how nature, the impact on nature was just incredible. The animals came back to the town and the pollution lessened. And I kept dreaming that we would be able to create a, a Sabbath, a world Sabbath for 
so that no aeroplanes would go and no cars would go and we could have one day that really stopped because we saw the incredible positive impact on the world and the environment um, but it didn't happen yet <laughs> so, way to go thank you Lisa uh, not too late and, and so um, listening to all these things you know uh, you asked for pushback okay so I love the idea of a day of la rest. I love the idea that the animals can rest. I love the idea of the seven year, the seven day, the seven week, the seven year cycle, where it's good for the earth to rest every seven years. We know about leaving fields fallow. Um, all those things are good things. And I absolutely love that idea. But to push back a little bit, um, I see a day of rest is it leisure or is it torture? And I'm looking back at early American writings, the Protestant churches, the Dutch Reformed Church, et cetera, where they would force people to sit in pews in churches for long hours, which was torture for the children. And that is kind of extremist view. Um, and of course, the, the idea of leisure, which would be, um, here in the United States, I'm taking Sunday off and I'm gonna watch football all day. And also the, the practical nature of work. So this came up in our little Laudato Si uh, group in our, in our church. What does rest mean when the cows have to be milked? I mean, how do we deal with, with the practical nature? So while I love the idea, I'm thinking how uh, possible is it truly to rest? Amazing. That's really, really great questions and really helping to add some, uh, some more layers to the discussion. Um, I think let's, I think let's go into the text and I hope I can, I can kind of, uh, can give some ground to our discussion, but it doesn't mean that we're going to leave off any of the um, topics that people have raised, which are all really fascinating and really, really helpful. Um, I feel like everyone has such a unique uh, perspective that I think you're all going to add a lot to the discussion. Uh, we only have 15 more minutes, so let's get into the text and whatever comes up, feel free to jump in um, and, uh, you know, I'm just moderating, so I don't, I don't, I don't need to call on you or anything. So I'm going to share my screen and, and then we'll make a, make a live. And while, I'll, while I do that, um, we can all meditate because it'll take a second. <laughs> Just coming back then to Liz, if we got a second, we're actually very lucky if we can take a day of rest. If we think of all the people who do have to work, like doctors, nurses, farmers, um, yeah, there's yeah. quite quite a lot of people actually who who don't have that privilege. Um, I guess they take another day of rest, I presume. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but just to have a, you know, we we are privileged to be able to take. Yeah, and oh, I'm mindful too of people that are never allowed to rest. Human slaves, trafficked people, never rest. Are you muted on, on purpose? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> um, but I, I just said a lot of insightful things. Um, but uh, you'll have to use your imagination. Does anyone want to read from the group? And then feel free to, we can kind of jump in as we, as I, things come up for you. Um, so I want to read out loud. And brave soul. I'm always happy to read if no one else wants. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can go for it. Okay, we're starting at the top, Exodus 35, yeah. 2. On six days work may be done, but on the seventh day you shall have a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever, whoever does any, 
work on it shall be put to death. Oh my so God. impactful <laughs> is this commandment. Today, most of the world's population enjoys a weekend that can be traced back to this commandment. Rabbi Norman Lamb writes, Perhaps the most powerful expression of the Bible's concern for man's respect for the integrity of nature as the possession of its creator rather than his own preserve is the Sabbath. The six work days were given to man in which to carry out the commissions to subdue the world, to impose on nature his creative talents. But the seventh day is a Sabbath. Man must cease his creative interference in the natural order. And by this act of renunciation, demonstrate his awareness that the earth is the Lord's and that man therefore bears a moral responsibility to give an accounting to its owner for how he has disposed of it during the days he subdued it. A new insight into Jewish eschatology, not a progressively growing technology and rising GNP, but a peaceful and mutually respectful coexistence between man and his environment. Okay, that's already a lot of stuff. So maybe we can start unpacking. And I saw already Liz was reacting from already the first, just in the verse. Um, <laughs> what, was, what was coming up for you? Uh, that, that I should be put to uh, death if I do not rest. So, yeah. <laughs> Probably more cause and effect, don't you think, by now? <laughs> yeah, perhaps I am creating my own death by not resting completely on the <laughs> Sabbath. Right, it's pretty extreme. It kind of adds to your to your critique of like the Sabbath. What is, what happens when the Sabbath is something that's that's forced on you? Um, it doesn't really have the same. Doesn't seem like it's going to save the world if everyone's. Well, I don't know. It could be if everyone's forced not to fly, and you know, like could be helpful. Um, but uh, it's not going to change. It's not going to make a. I don't know if it'll make a transformation of consciousness if everyone's like uh, living in fear and they're not. I don't know. What, what do people think? I, if I can say just on the on the put to death part, I mean, I think um, uh, there's a few things in the Bible that that um, will use this phrase. Um, and just from a, a Judeo legal point of view, we we understand this to not mean sort of straight off with your head but rather that there's a there's a specific process and there's also different uh, ways that they deal in other words it's not it's not as violent and whatever as i think it seems uh, as, as it seems to come over at least that's what i understand from the um from the jewish point of view having said that i think maybe it is to shock us as well and because in other words, this isn't just a nice idea is really what I think the Bible is saying. Um, but that this idea of having to balance oneself is actually really important for not just for humanity, but for the world. About two cents. Mm -hmm. It also connects to what you said, Lukoi, before how um, even God had um, a day of rest. So, um, and therefore he's commanding us to. Yes, okay, maybe I have a point here. I'm just worried because um, if if that there is a portion of the word that I said that uh, the way my sisters put it, then whoever, whoever will not put it holy, then we will be put to death, you see. I guess, for example, in the Christian context, um, in most of the cases, realize that, okay, the Christians, uh, we may go for a church, maybe two, in some instances, there are churches we go to, maybe two hours, three hours, and people go back to their, to their normal duties. So um, my worry is this, if from the, from the religion top, you see, the, the services are divided, there is morning service, like that, like that, three hours, two hours. So if they from the leadership of the church, let us say that the people put the order of the churches like that, uh, not every church, though a mine we go throughout the day, but let us see if the church leaders, we put them, for example, three hours, two hours. So how will God, because when the God say that he will judge, 
the the world harshly and this one will start from those who know him you know you know so it means at the end of the day god will have mercy i think god can have mercy to the belief to the to the to the sheep than the shepherd because the shepherd you know we have subdivided these services into pieces and yet you know we know the word but we compromise the the truth of the word because of the what we want to we want to appease or we want to conform with the world you see according to our tight shadows and we want to we want to go as the world is moving you see but we we are going very far if the people of the world of today can say no every office will enter without a mask you see we, people who are very passionate without a mask and you know but the word of god when he say let's keep the day holy a sunday or a saturday only very few will be in the church the whole day. So I don't know through this mercy, will God forgive us for this? Because uh, generally from the, uh, from the, from the top or the from the shepherd uh, desk, uh, the, sh the sheep are lost, uh, you see. And uh, maybe I, I think this one we need to, to we need to put the em emphasis on the Christian on the on the leadership of the church because the, the shepherd come to the church to, to know the word, you see. Most of the cases, most of the people we never read the word completely. Most of them do get it from the pastoral angle, you see. And then, but if you read the, the word very carefully for each individual you realize that at the end of the day even the pastoral team the the, the shepherd team has led the, the sheep of god astray for keeping this day holy you see so my question goes here how will God judge us because we have subdivided the, this world to, to compromise so that we, we appease the people or according we conform to the surrounding and we compete with the environment so that it suits best, you see. Mm -hmm. right. Does anybody in this group know that at some point in time in any anybody's history was that ever taken literally <laughs> like in the past if you didn't observe the sabbath were you put to death right so according to i, I don't know so according to jewish tradition um the there there's an idea of a, a jewish court of law that put a person to death more than once every 50 years is considered a violent court of law um, and the idea was they really did not, it was more meant to be, like Alana says, a, a deterrent and not actually to be putting people to death. And they actually made the conditions, according to Jewish tradition, by which somebody would be killed for breaking the Sabbath. I mean, you see in the Sabbath, in the, in the Bible, I will say, you know, if somebody carries sticks, he gets, and he ends up, he's breaking the Sabbath, he gets stoned to death. Um, that is the biblical model, which is very extreme. Well, what the rabbis did was they made it into something where in order for you to get killed for breaking the Sabbath, you would have to, somebody would say, have, you'd have to have two witnesses who would say to you, you are breaking the Sabbath. And then you'd have to say, I know I'm breaking the Sabbath and sorry. And that's why I'm doing this action. And so you'd have to be an idiot basically in order to actually make yourself liable to get killed. So the rabbis really like, they made it very narrow, like incredibly narrow that would actually be possible for someone to be killed for this. But that's like, I don't wanna get us too far off field, um, but it's just, just a, like you're saying from a historical perspective, um, this was, you know, people were not getting killed. Like it was very rare um, if, if it ever happened, I guess what, the one time in the Bible. Um, just diving back in, you all are bringing up such interesting points. Um, I'm gonna like I'm gonna bring us back, um, and I think let's we have four minutes left, so maybe just um, maybe we'll just unpack a little bit what we've read so far. What do you think of this concept? This es I think it's called eschatology of um, of like it's basically what's our like what's our what are we going towards? What's our view of like heaven? What's our view of end of days like? Do we, is our goal just that our, our um, I think it's a gross nas national product, like our, like our money is just increasing more and more? Um, or do we, is our goal that we're gonna have more and more peace, more and more mutually respectful coexistence between you know, humans and their environment? I'm thinking of 
um, in um, there's a, a Buddhist country where they have a concept of gross national happiness. And their goal is to mm -hmm. make the most happiness for the most number of people. So what if that was our goal as a, as a nation um, as a, you know, in, in our communities? Um, so I want to, I want to bring it back to uh, this question of how, how can, um, how can the Sabbath help us to, um, to, uh, how can the Sabbath help us in this process in this, uh, in this transition away from just accumulating money as a society and as an individual to accumulating happiness and healthy relationships and, um, what do y'all think? Well, early, earlier, uh, several several of us were talking about, you know, it being a day of reflection, uh, reconnecting. Well, if you if you have the need to be reconnected with the Lord or whatever, but uh, I think that in order to achieve that that latter part of that statement uh, with, with creation and being at peace and everyone being happy that it would be a lifestyle change. It's not just the Sabbath day. I mean, we could, we could start with that, but um, I think just being in this group today and everything else that um, whatever you may be doing in your own uh, personal groups uh, is a step in the right direction. And uh, that we need to spread the news. Uh, hopefully more people will get on board. Um, the Sabbath, the Sabbath is a great start, um, but we need to go beyond that. And, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about seven days of rest. I, I think you understand what, where I'm going with this is it's a, it's a great day for reflection and, and what you can do, but it literally is, as far as the environment is concerned, a, it's a lifestyle change. And, and we, there's a lot of prayer and reflection to go along with that. Um, and I think that goes along with what we were saying earlier in this group. I'd like the idea too of the, the hidden lining in the pandemic is that forced many of us to slow down and be more intentional. Yeah, that's a really, Lisa brought in that really nice perspective. Um, Josh, do you wanna, what, what, are you, what are you thinking? Um. Sorry, I, for, I forgot what the verse uh, verse said. I had a thought that I was going to say. I just lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, no worries. Um, do wanna, uh, Harry, do you want to wanna Oh, yeah. No, I, I remember. So, yeah, um, yeah I was going to say, uh, I guess if, if you're spending like seven days, um, seven days a week working, like, it, you can get into the mindset there's nothing else besides working and creating and um changing your environments but um taking at least one day it's certainly a reminder that um uh, it's certainly a reminder of um what you're what you're doing all the work for and um there's a phrase that i like to use um when describing like why the sabbath is important to me um, so the phrase is Sunday neurosis. It's a phrase that was come up by uh, Viktor Frankl. And it's uh, to describe that when people sort of take a break from the busyness of life, they're forced to like confront why they're, uh, you know, why they're being so busy and what all that work is for. So I think uh, taking that moment to pause and to contemplate why we're, why we're doing all that work, I think it'll help channel the work into a more, um, into a more purposeful uh, direction. Amazing. Thank you. Great note to end on. Um, everyone, we're going to meet back here, God willing, in one week, same time, same place. Thank you all so much for coming. I really appreciate what everyone added to the conversation. Um, please uh, come, bring your friends, and hopefully we can make this continue to grow. And um, really appreciate like, a really wonderful discussion. Um, so I hope everyone has Thank a wonderful you. night. I'll spread the word. I love these sessions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, right. everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>